Hello, welcome students. My name is Bonfas Mdugur, a biology teacher. I'm here today to present to you another important concept in human reproduction. If you remember, last presentation was about gametogenesis. We saw how the process of gametogenesis occurs in both the male and the female reproductive system. But the completion of the process of gametogenesis means other processes have to take place. And the process that takes place after gametogenesis is fertilization. Therefore, the concept I'm going to present to you here is fertilization in human being and the consequences of fertilization. But before I go into what I prepared today, let me remind you the important aspects of reproductive cells which will take part in the process of fertilization. The human being reproductive cells involves two gametes. There are female reproductive cell. This is known as the ova. The ovum consists of the following parts. The female reproductive cells consist of one, the corona radiata, the outermost layer forming the female reproductive cell, but also there is zona pellucida just behind the corona radiata, and then there is plasma membrane, there is cortical granule, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. These are parts the female productive cell consists. If we draw uh, the female productive cell, these parts can appear as the follow. There is nucleus, This is corona radiata. The zona pellucida. Plasma membrane. The cortical granule just behind the plasma membrane, this is the cytoplasm, and the last is the nucleus. Therefore, the structure of female productive cell has these important parts. And it is these parts will be involved in the process of fertilization. But also, we have male reproductive cell. Male reproductive cell, the sperm. The sperm cell consists of a chromosome. consists of cytoplasm. The nucleus, but also the neck, middle pits, the 
the tail. These parts can be presented as follow. This being the acrosome, the cytoplasm, nucleus, the neck, middle piece, and the tail. It is these parts, it is these, some, um, some of these parts will be involved in the process of fertilization. Dear students, by having seen uh, the parts that consist of reproductive cells, you can ask yourself that what question can be asked from this area? You can be asked to describe the structure of male reproductive cell. You can be asked to describe the structure of the female reproductive cells. But also, you can be asked to explain how the male reproductive cell is adapted for its function. Or you can be asked to explain how the female reproductive cell is adapted for its function. It means, in order to respond to various questions like that, you will have to know the important structures the reproductive cell consist in and how they perform their work. Dear students, as I've said before, the important concept I'm going to present to you today is fertilization. If that is the case, let me take you quickly to what I expect to cover. My presentation is going to focus on fertilization. And if it is fertilization, shall have a look on importance of fertilization. But also the stages leading to fertilization. These are important aspects that will be covered uh, during this presentation. To remind you, there are some importance of fertilization. Fertilization enable fusion between male gametes and female gamete to form a zygote. It is through this process where the zygote will be formed. And after the formation of the zygote, will give rise to other important uh, structure, such as embryo, but also in sexually producing organisms, fertilization is a means that restores the diploid number of chromosomes. that since the male gamete has a haploid number of chromosomes and the female gamete has a haploid number of chromosomes, they fuse together. They fuse together, forming a diploid zygote. That has the diploid number of chromosomes of the parent cells. But another importance of fertilization is that through fertilization, variation can be maintained.
to bring about variation. Also, the male gamete and the female gamete, both two cells has different genetic makeup. By fusing together, it means two different genetic makeup are brought together. That will bring about the variation. Dear students, these are just a few. You can add other importance of fertilization from your experience. Another aspect I'm going to cover today is, I stated before, is the stages are leading to fertilization. Shall have a look on the concept of capacitation. The process in which the male gamete is prepared before it fertilizes the egg cell. But also, shall have a look on the concept of acrosome reaction. The process in which the path is made through the corona radiata and the zona perucida for the sperm cell to enter the egg cell. But also shall have a look on fusion. The process in which the anterior end of the male gamete fuse with a plasma membrane of the female gamete but also the cortical reaction. The process in which the fertilization membrane is formed to prevent polysperms to enter the egg cell. And lastly, fertilization. Fusion. The male gamete and the female gamete fusing together to form a diploid zygote. These are things that I expect to cover through my presentation. Dear students, because fertilization has various aspects, I'm going to use guiding questions that will take us to different aspects of fertilization. The first question reads, why should a sperm cell undergo capacitation? It means capacitation is an important aspect a sperm cell have to undergo. Why? Capacitation. Here, first of all, capacitation is a preparatory process. The sperm cell undergo before fertilization. It must be prepared so that fertilization can take place. The importance of capacitation is that, first, the plasma protein and glycoprotein are removed. This layer must be removed from the male reproductive cell. Second is that the cholesterol layer is removed. Also, 
Capacitation involves the removal of the cholesterol layer from the sperm head. And third, the sperm cell plasma membrane become permeable for calcium ion. So that the beating activity of the flagella can take place in its way toward the female reproductive cell. By so doing, this question will have been responded. What you need is to explain the importance of capacitation and why it takes place. Dear students, if that is the case, let us now see question number two and how the question can be responded. But the question says, why is it necessary for a chromosome reaction to occur during fertilization? I said before that the second event leading to fertilization is acrosome reaction. What is the acrosome? The acrosome is a sac like that enclose the anterior end of the sperm. At the sperm head, there is a cap like that is an acrosome. What do the acrosome consist? The acrosome consists of two enzymes. The hyaluronidase and protease. These are two enzymes that the acrosome consists. Therefore, it means to respond to this question, you have to explain why this is very important. The importance of this reaction is that it digests the path through the corona radiata and the zona perucida. In order for the sperm cell to enter the egg cell, the path must be made through the corona radiata and the zona perucida. What enzymes are involved in this process? Hyaluronidase. The hyaluronidase digests the path through corona radiata. This is the outermost layer of the female reproductive cell. But also, the protease enzyme this digests the path through the zona pellucida. When this layer has been digested by these two enzymes to make a very fine path, the sperm cell can enter 
the egg cell from outside to the inner part of the egg cell. By so doing, you will have responded correctly to this question. What you need to do, my dear students, is to explain the importance of acrosome reaction. Is to explain the role of the two enzymes. Dear students, I'm sure you are enjoying this presentation. Dear students, if you have just joined uh, this presentation, the concept is being discussed here is fertilization in human being. And we have done with the question number one and the question number two. Let us now go to question number three so that we can see how different question can be asked from this concept. Question number three reads as follow. The cortical reaction involves the formation of fertilization membrane. A. Explain how fertilization membrane is formed. B. Explain the importance of fertilization membrane. Dear students, after acrosome reaction, the next process that takes place is cortical reaction. If you remember, during my presentation at the beginning, I drawn a sketch showing female reproductive cell. Behind the plasma membrane, there were cortical granules. And also, there was zona pellucida. And outside, there were corona radiata. Inside the cytoplasm, there were cytoplasm, nucleus. And I said, different part of the male reproductive cell and the female reproductive cell has its function to do to effect the process of fertilization. We have done with the zona pellucida and corona radiata. The remaining part of the female productive cell is cortical granules, and it is these which are involved in a cortical reaction. How does the cortical reaction involved in its function? Let us now see. Remember, the question required to explain how fertilization membrane is formed, and B, explain the importance of fertilization membrane. Once the sperm has entered through the corona radiata in the zona pellucida, here the cortical granules produce the enzymes. produce the enzymes that stimulates hardening and thickening Stimulates hardening and thickening of zona pellucida. The hardening wall is known as fertilization membrane. We can say that the membrane which is formed as a result of the enzymes produced by the cortical granules 
is known as fertilization membrane. It means that question, particular part one, require you to explain how the fertilization membrane uh, occurs. It means you'll have to explain the role of the enzymes in hardening and thickening of the zona pellucida. By so doing, you'll have responded correctly to that question. But part B require the explanation. of the importance of fertilization membrane. Something to remember here is that in sexual reproduction, particularly human being, the fusion is between one male gamut and female gamete. The fusion is between one male gamete and a female gamete. For that case, only one male gamete is allowed to enter the egg cell. How this is possible? The thing that happened in the female productive cell is to make the outer layer of it impermeable for the male gametes, that only one male gamete is allowed to enter the female productive cell. And the membrane that performs that activity of present, preventing other male gametes to enter is known as fertilization membrane. Therefore, the role of fertilization membrane is to prevent other gametes. not to enter the egg cell. When one has successfully entered the egg cell, it means only one male gamete is allowed. And uh, the membrane that prevents it is known as fertilization membrane. Therefore, to respond to this question, you'll have just to go and explain the function of fertilization membrane, which is prevention of more than one gamut not to enter the egg cell. This is known as polysperms. Polysperms means many sperms. This aspect is refer to the prevention of not more than one sperm to enter the egg cell. Dear students, we have seen how the cortical reaction occurs and the significance of the cortical reaction as one of the processes leading to fertilization. Let me take you to Question number four, so that you can see how different questions can be asked from this area. And of course, showing different aspects of fertilization in human beings. This question reads, describe the process that lead to fertilization. It means the process of fertilization involves different processes. Is what you are required to describe right here so that you answer this question. First of all, to respond to this question, if you remember, we said there is capacitation. This is the first process. 
in which the spermatozoa is prepared for fertilization. As I said, this is an activation uh, period during which the male gamete is prepared for fertilization. And it must take place prior uh, fertilization takes place. The second process is acrosome reaction. Here, the acrosome contain two enzymes, the protease and higher ruronidase. These enzymes digest the path through the corona radiata and zona pellucida. So that the sperm head can enter the egg cell. Therefore, you'll have to explain what is acrosome reaction and the significance of the acrosome reaction. So the process is fusion. Here, the sperm plasma membrane fuse with the egg cell cytoplasm. The sperm plasma membrane fuses with the egg cell membrane. It has entered all the way through the zona pellucida and the corona radiata. And finally, they meet uh, with the cell membrane, the egg cell. This is the third process. After that, what happens? Either next process, which is cortical reaction. Here, the fertilization membrane is formed to prevent not more than one sperm to enter the egg cell. To respond to this part, you'll have to explain the role of the cortical granules that are just behind the egg cell plasma membrane that the cortical granule release enzymes which stimulate hardening and the thickening of zona pellucida. And the resulting structure is known as fertilization membrane. That is the next process leading to fertilization. The next process that the cortical reaction has just Take any place. 
The next process is uh, process number five. Once now the sperm cell, the sperm head is inside the cytoplasm, find its way toward the female reproductive cell nucleus. Here is a fusion between This process of fusion results into diploid zygote. The final changes is that the cytoplasm of the egg cell moves around. moves around from the point of sperm entry. The cytoplasm moves around from the point of sperm entry. The significance of this is to establish the bilateral symmetry point. Human being is one of the organisms which has bilateral symmetry. The bilateral symmetry is established during fertilization. Dear students, that is how the prepared questions could have been answered. But the same concept can produce different questions. For instance, you can be asked to explain how the sperm cell is adapted for fertilization. We understand that the sperm cell is there for fertilization. But how is it adapted for fertilization? To respond to a question like that, you have to consider different parts of the sperm cells and how they are responsible or how they contribute in the process of fertilization. Therefore, the question that asked adaptation, it means you have to relate the structure and the function. For instance, question like that, you'd have to consider the role of acrosome. As you understand, the acrosome contain enzymes. The enzymes that digest the path through corona radiata and the zona perucida for the sperm to enter the egg cell. But also, you'll have to consider the role of cytoplasm. That what the cytoplasm has and how the cytoplasm contributed to fertilization. But also, have to consider the role of nucleus. That the sperm cell has nucleus. What is there within the nucleus? And how is it uh, responsible for fertilization? But also the neck. A very thin part just behind the head of the somatozoa what the neck consists, and what is the function of that composition, that component of the neck. But also, you have to consider the role of middle piece. It 
it's understand we also know that the middle piece contain mitochondria. What is the role of mitochondria for fertilization? But also the tail. What is the role of the tail for fertilization? Therefore, to respond to the question like that, what you need to consider is the function of each part of the spermatozoa. How does that part relate to fertilization? By so doing, the question like that could have been answered. But also, other questions can be asked to explain how the egg cell is adapted for fertilization. Egg cell. The female reproductive cell. The same as the first question. The things to consider is the role of corona radiata. The role of zona pellucida. The role of plasma membrane. The role of cortical granuli. But also the role of nucleus. These are different parts of the female reproductive cell. How are these parts help the egg cell to perform its function? Therefore, we can see different questions can be asked from this area. But what you need is enough knowledge that can enable you to respond correctly to various questions. Dear students, up to this point, I have managed to go through various concepts I expected to cover through this presentation. I'm sure you have been with me and you have got some important concepts that can enable you answering different questions that can be asked from this concept. I'm happy that you have been with me. To get more information about fertilization, and in particular, the arrangement of different stages, as I presented to you here in the beginning, you just list the advanced biology book. Bye. Michael Kent. This is the book where you can find these stages lead for fertilization being arranged in the manner I have presented here. Till next time, I say goodbye.